Okay, so my Radtel RT860 has arrived. I ordered this off eBay about a week ago and it just arrived yesterday. So if like me, one of the reasons you've purchased this is because you've enjoyed modifying the Quansheng UVK5, etc. with the SI4732HF chip. Obviously this has already got that built in. So let's first of all have a look at seeing how we access that. And uh, the bottom side key here, a single press of that puts us into that mode. You can see it says radio starting. And on the Quan Sheng, we get the wait message, don't we? So obviously it's starting to access that. And you can see it's put us into the, uh, the HF mode. And uh, we can select a few different things here. You can see at the moment, the little cursor just there is uh, allowing us to uh, to change the frequency so we can we can change the frequency up and down in uh, at the moment one kilohertz steps we can change that uh, or we could direct dial a frequency in there so we can direct dial there you go 14 2 5 0 puts us on 20 meter band so there we go we can uh, let's say we can direct dial frequencies in there um, if we use the bottom right hand corner button, so the little hash key, and uh, if I press that once without getting too much reflection off the screen, there you go, you can see it changes it from lower sideband to upper sideband, or to CW, uh, back to lower sideband again. I think if we press and hold it, it should, uh, puts it in, um, yeah, it changes the, the bands, there we go, so that's in medium wave at the moment, press and hold it again. Uh, then it's in long wave, press and hold again, it'll say uh, radio starting or whatever. Uh, and then it gives, gives us the FM broadcast band, and then press it again, reset radio, please wait, and then we're back to uh, AM on uh, 20 meters on HF. So that we press it, uh, is it a quick press or a long press? I can't remember. No, it's going to be a long press, isn't it, which will take us through to... Uh, upper sideband no it wasn't it was a short press sorry so short press has taken us to lower sideband press again upper sideband and so on so it scrolls through the different uh, different things like that uh, next button we need to know then is the star key on the bottom left there so if I press the star key it moves the cursor across so you can see we've just moved up to here now so the numbers so we can change the um, the frequency set there's four in here at the moment because this is how it's come out of the box so uh, currently channel zone four if you like is 14 270 on mine uh, it'll say radio restarting so three uh, is the same uh, two and then it'll restart and then it's on what we're on, on one there we go 14 270 again so they're all the same you can change those uh, as you wish and let's press it again changes the frequency step so frequency step is currently in one kilohertz we can change that anything between nine uh thousand kilohertz 500 100 50 10 5 uh, or back to one kilohertz again so that's the uh the frequency step so it'll increment there if we press the star key again we can change the bandwidth so the um the bandwidth is currently at three uh, kilohertz. We can change that between 2.2, 1.2, 1, 1 uh, 0.5 or 4. So I'm going to set that back to 3 again. And if we go across, uh, you've got your low noise amplifier. And you can see we've got AGC, minus 36, minus 35, 34. There you go. So you can change your, your low noise amplifier. Uh, between zero and uh, looks like 30 minus 36 if uh, if you want to I'm going to leave that on the AGC and then the next one is your your beat frequency oscillator or BFO definitely need to use that on here because of what I've discovered is that um, the frequencies do seem slightly off this one's off by about 400 kilohertz so um, if you click your beat frequency oscillator and oh we've gone off it yeah, you can uh, you can change it here. So I needed to uh, add about 400 to mine uh, to make it on frequency. So to exit that mode again, then we just press that uh, second or the bottom side key. That puts us back into the radio mode. And you can see at the moment it's in 
VFO mode. So the hash key changes between modes. Channel mode. There you go, channel mode. Let's turn the volume up a little bit. Zone mode. Zone mode. And then back to VFO mode again. Frequency mode. Or frequency mode as it calls it. So, uh, yeah, again, you can direct dial those frequencies. You can see at the moment it's on an AM uh, airband frequency. That's how it came. So you can dial in uh, whatever frequency you want. And let's see, it's automatically changed it to FM when I've put the uh, two meter call and frequency in. And uh, likewise, we go back to a uh, an AM airband frequency. It'll automatically switch to AM when it's in the uh, program to soften in the uh, airband. So next, we'll have a look at entering the menu. So if we press the central green circular button that enters the menu basic settings again you see we're on the the basic settings so if we press it again um, you can change your name and call sign voice prompt is menu two you can turn on or off that key beep and to access these or to actually activate them let's turn the key beep off you scroll up to off press the green one to confirm and it'll have confirmed it. Uh, and then to go back, your back button is the star key. That takes you back. There you go. Basic so, settings. Back to basic settings. And we'll carry on scrolling through those. Uh, you've got your voice prompt on too. So we can turn that off as well if we want to. Let's do that. And then the back key. So there you go. That's, uh, that's turned the voice prompt off now. Uh, timer or your lock timer on number four. The screen brightness on five, your backlight on six, your light timer on seven, uh, menu exit. Uh, let's try that. Oh, I see. So what that one does is how long the, the menu holds for, basically. So you can either have it off five seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds or 30 seconds, 45 or a minute. Uh, right up to how far does that go? Quite a long way. Yeah, quite a long way by the looks of it. So, um, yeah, that's how long the menu holds for. Uh, state timer. I'll have to have a look in instructions and see what that one does. I'm not going to look up all of these. Dual standby. TX priority. So that'll be usually if a channel's already busy, it won't let you transmit, I'd imagine. Or you can select your frequency steps in there. So let's have a little look at that one. So we've got 0.25 kilohertz, 1.25, 2.55, 6.25. 10, 12.5, 20 kilohertz, 25 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, 500 kilohertz, one megahertz steps by the looks of it. Bit of a shame because there's no 8.33 megahertz for the airband by the looks of it, but um, not to worry. We can, I'm sure we can, uh, we can live with that. Uh, well, I can't remember that was on, but we'll back out of that before we change anything. Uh, talk around. Let's have a quick look in there. Talk around off, uh, invert frequency or off. So if you're using a repeater frequency, basically you can invert the frequencies if you've got a duplex frequency in there. So you could uh, transmit on the output of the repeater or something like that if, you, uh, if you've if you got repeater frequencies uh, programmed in there. Uh, save mode, scan mode. So I'm not going to go into all these. We're just looking at what's in there. Scan dwell. I assume that's... Uh, how long it holds for during the scan. But again, we'll have to have a look at the instructions. This is only really just going to be a quick looking through the menus. Scan return, alarm type, main PTTTX. Let's have a look what that one does. Area A, main area. So I don't know. Well, again, I'll have to have a look at the instructions. This is going to be a first look video, this one. So we're not going to go in too much depth. Dual display, single or dual. Uh, again, we'll have to have a, something to have a play with, isn't it? So let's, uh, let's scroll down. Was that all of them? I forget how far we'd gone. Oh, no, we're not in the right thing here. Basic set we were in, weren't we? Let's get back to where we were. Uh, dual display was 21. Area A mode, 22. Area A show, is that? And area A zone... Area B mode, area B show, 
Area B zone. And again, I've no idea what these are. We'll have to have a look, and that'll be a, something for a future video once I've sussed out what these mean. We can delete channels on menu 29. Ah, the instructions on menu 30 was quite a clever idea. So if we press the green button there, you'll see it brings up a, uh, a QR code which you can scan, and then uh, it'll take you to a website with the uh, with the radio's instructions. I thought that was quite a neat idea. Let's press the star key to go back. You can set your LED contrast on there, or the LCD display contrast. Uh, frequency input, so again, for, for saving channels, I think that's what it is. Oh no, we've, we can change the number of um, bits. I think that means number of spaces, so uh, that'd be interesting. I'm going to change that to 8 bits to see if it lets me uh, uh, input frequencies a little bit more accurately. So let's come out of that. And back again there we go oh i've gone too far i forget how far down that was i wonder if we can direct access menus no you can't so i assume if you could just dial in a, a menu number to uh to get to it but it looks like you do have to scroll right through because i know some of these radios you can direct access the menus but it doesn't look like you can do that on this radtel rt860 uh let's keep going down to find out where we were we've been through all these quite a long way down there was loads in the menu absolutely loads frequency input in this initialization on menu 33 uh, the version on 34 let's have a look just tells us what the radio version is so that's the uv radio version 2.04 and then the date of that that version as well so that was uh, 25th of the 11th uh, 2024 uh, back out of that one uh, that was and that was menu 34 and then we're back to entering your name and call sign so uh, I guess that's probably for uh, the startup screen maybe uh, I don't know what's on there again something to have a little play with on a on another video not for today uh, let's go back so yeah that was um, menu one basic sets we've just been for all the menu one menus um, we go into uh, key define on number two and you can set what all the, the slide, side keys do. So your slave PTT, which is this one here. Um, what the short presses and long presses do of key one. So that'll be key one, short press, side key one, long press, side key two, side key two, long press. So we've got short and long presses of side key two, which is this one. Um, your alarm key which is the orange one on the top there so you can set what you want that to do again on short and long presses uh, and then it, it, so it's very fully customizable really um, by the user because you can set your what your long and short presses do of all the, the numeric keypads as well by the looks of things uh, or well, long presses anyway of the numeric keypads so uh, there's no there's nothing on there other than the letters but like I say you can set uh, set those to do whatever you want basically and then back to one again so let's go to uh, the next menu, analog set settings. So you've got your um, your squelch level, your TX start tone um, off or on. So um, I'm presuming that'll send a tone when you uh, press the push to talk. Uh, end tone. So I guess that's a bit like a Roger bleep. Yeah, that will be like say Roger bleep one, two. Uh, send radio name. Or off so we're going to leave that off for the time being and then single tones so you've got your uh, 1750 kilohertz tone you can set that if you want to uh, you've got your mic gain settings in there and this is all in that analog settings so uh, you can set your mic gain uh, mine's currently set on 15 but you can go where can we go right up to anything between 0 and 31 so mine's currently set at 15 so we're going to come back out of that let's just check that i haven't altered it no it still is on uh, 15 so that's good got your speaker gain as well so we can set the speaker gain uh, glitch th again not one that i'm familiar with something i'll have to look up detect range repeat a delay and then you've got your dtmf stuff in there as well so all your dtmf tones and that uh, settings for that is uh, is in there. We've quickly skipped through those. Um, 
RSSI refresh, whatever that one is. Not sure about that one. Vox settings, your Vox delay, and then Vox TH. And then we're back to the squelch level again. So that was all for the analog settings. You've got your channel settings where you can set your CTCSS or your DSC tones uh, for receive or transmit. Set your transmit frequency. Got your encryption for your DSC. Mute codes, bandwidth, tail tone, scrambler, busy lock, TX power. And I think there is just high and low power on this and we'll test that out in a, in a future video. So stay tuned for that one, we'll do some tests on this. You can add to the scan list, timeout timer. In fact, let's quickly check the timeout timer. Timeout timer is off, that's good for me. Channel alias, so you can give your channels a, a number or a name presumably. Your offset directions, so that'll be either plus or minus. Uh, or, you can, or you can set your offset frequency. So we haven't set a frequency yet, so it's not going to let us do anything with that. Ah, oh, there you go. So there's your, your offset frequency. So uh, the other one was offset direction, if you've set an offset frequency. AM and FM receive. So you can switch between AM and FM. So uh, again, I know it said it automatically changes for your airband, but if you wanted to change it between AM and FM, you can there. And then we're back to our CTCSS and DSCs and all that sort of thing. So uh, that's all for that menu. And then menu five is your zone settings. And you can scroll through and you've got all your different zones there, which you can set up. Let's come out of that. And then six is radio. So uh, you've got your receive standby list, channel list. Uh, and that's all there is in that one. And then menu seven, time manage. So APO, APO timer, again, not sure what all these do, but um, again, we'll have a little play with those. Like I said, this is just going to be a quick look through um, what this does. And then you've got extended menu as well. Uh, ah, so this does have GPS according to this as well. So we can switch the GPS on or off. So um, that's what here, uh, the GPS settings are. I don't know if this Radtel RT860 does have GPS. It would suggest it does because it seems to let me switch it between on or off. So uh, I'm going to switch it on or leave it on. Um, but I don't actually know what the GPS does or... Uh, how it will display GPS if it will at all, but uh, let me know in the comments if you've had a play with that and if you've uh, sussed it out or if uh, if your your version does or doesn't have uh, GPS. Set the GPS board rate there as well. Uh, you can see all the different board rates you can set your GPS up for. Again, not going to mess around with that just yet. And I think if we press the back button once more, yeah, that's it, extended, and then we're back to basic settings again. So that is a quick overview of all the menu settings on the new Radtel RT860. So that was just a quick first look at the Radtel RT860. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and in future videos we'll test this out some more. Thanks for watching, 73.